Whitney um, and today I am going to be talking about ASTMC 1585 which is wicking um, or rate of absorption. So for rate of absorption we're trying to see how much water the concrete is taking in. So um, that is important because generally the denser, the stronger the concrete, the more durable the concrete, the less water it's going to pull in. And John has talked a lot about concrete being just kind of a huge hard sponge um, so when it's taking in water, a lot of times it's taking in salts and, and other things that can actually break the concrete apart. So it's important to know how much water it's going to take in because then we can kind of, we're, we're estimating that durability factor in a sense or one parameter of that. So, um, so getting into the actual procedure for wicking, um, you take a 4x8 sample or a 4x8 cylinder and you're going to have to saw cut it. Um, this one's already been cut. I make John do that. I kind of mess with power tools and things. It's just not a good idea. So um, you saw cut it. You want to get two inch depth. Um, and then you want to get the inside part, not one of the finished um, surfaces, because you want to get a true, a true sense of you know, what the concrete overall is doing. Um, so you're going to take your sample. And you want to make sure that the side that was cut is the side that's going to be going down into the water. You have to seal up pretty much all the surfaces except the area that's going to be sitting in the water because we don't want any extra absorption hitting anywhere else. We're trying to get a true idea of, you know, the surface area versus what is being absorbed. So you're going to just take some tape. I'm using duct tape right now. Usually we use Gorilla Tape. I feel like you could fix a car with that stuff. So you're just not going to get any water seeping up through there. So you want to get some really good tape, get those sides covered. Um, so you just have the surface. You don't want any of the concrete showing on the sides. Now the standard calls for putting some sort of bag over top. And this literally is what the standard calls for. And then you're going to seal around the bag. The only problem with that is if you're not incredibly careful when you have that bag on there, you can get some water kind of getting up into the bag and then you're not getting a true reading. Um, we actually just ran into that with one of the tests that we were running. So what we have started doing is we'll usually epoxy coat the top so you just have a smooth surface, non-porous, and you can just wipe it all down and that way you don't have to worry about any water getting caught up in the bag. Um, so it's just, you know, makes the test a little bit more resilient and your results a little bit more accurate. Um, then once you do that, you're going to put some filter paper in the bottom of a container, put some water in there, and um, you do a reading at 60 seconds, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, then you do it every 10 minutes from there until you hit an hour, I believe. I always pull out the standard and do a quick review right before. Um, and then you're doing it hourly until 6 hours, and then you measure it once a day for 8 days. Um, and that's the, that's the information that you collect. Um, you're generally, you know, comparing some sort of optimized mix or some sort of admixture to a reference so you can get an idea of how that's impacting the durability over time. So this is one of my favorite tests. It's one that I've just kind of taken over in the lab. Um, just gives some really great information. So anyways, thanks so much for joining. Have a great day. Go concrete, beat asphalt. <laughs>